Righty, if you're here, you probably saw the plans for post or a red post um, and want to customize your flag, plural, um, or your image in general. So I'll just go through how to do that real quick. Uh, first of all, I've got a layout here uh, that's for customizing the flags. Uh, so if you open this, you get this thing. It's designed to go on one half of your screen. Right. Um, so, you've got this view. I'll make this smaller so you can see it better. And you've got your shader editor, your 3D view, and this. Uh, win the properties window, which is quite important for customizing your flag. Because if you don't want the flags to look like this, they're shape keys. I did this by doing a uh, cloth simulation and then applying different frames as shape keys. And you can change the values here to change the shape, which is quite nice. Um, so there are uh, different shape keys and you can customize your flag shape and you have the shader editor. This is designed so you have everything on one screen and you can render different images. So you have this on your, Im on your screen, you render it. Uh, and you can change the flag, change the shape keys, and render the next image with a different flag. I used that for another Blender post, uh, another post on Reddit. Uh, it's really handy. So if you want to render different views, uh, this is the layout to go. But into the shading uh, tab to change the flags. So I'm working in UV, it obviously looks better in cycles, but for some reason Blender 2.91 likes to crash uh, when I'm changing stuff. So this is how the flag looks in cycles. It's got transparency. I'll, uh, yeah, pretty nice flag. You can change stuff like the size. I'll show you this. This is the null tree for my flag with the name. This is a uh, no tree for uh, just a flag with other name. I'll show you both. I'll start with uh, the one with other name. So you see you've got these stripes. These are made with a gradient texture. If we look at this gradient texture, it's just a gradient on with a UV map. So this is the UV, UV map. It's a very simple mesh. It's just UV unwrapped. And it gets uh, the these color ramp inputs with constant so this is important you put your colors in the, the order for example let's make a copy and say we want uh, Austria so uh, this is the country where the trees explode <coughs> so you you need three parts so how you do that you have one at zero, add another one, say for uh, three parts you need one over three, so you need uh, color at every third. So one over three and two over three, so you have this. Then you take the color, I'm just gonna approximate the color, it's just red, nice beautiful red, and you just this lay out your flag like that. So you've got Austria, and look through this flag material, it's a bit dark, but whatever. It looks very different in cycles. Uh, this is very important to remember, the, if you're looking at it in EV, it looks often looks very differently in cycles, because you've got different things. So this is a note group uh, I made, really simple, just a simple material. Um, it takes base color and outputs a shader, and to change the size, you change uh, so to change the size of these um, holes. That you change the uh, scale here. Like this is 200. If you uh, make a close shot up shot, I found that 400 looks better. So it's smaller grain, but far away 200 looks better because you don't lose the detail. Of course, you can 
do whatever. But the uh, the bigger it is, the uh, easier the the noiser has it, and the easier the noiser will keep the detail. And if you want to change, like how much is uh, see through, so everything black here is see through, just EV not can display it. So if you want to change how much you see through, you can play around with this color ramp. Uh, for example, you could make it inverted, which makes no sense because then everything would be see through. That's kinda, yeah. So this is how you change um, basic things about the flag. Uh, this should be, yeah. You can uh, change how much bump it has here, but that's not really relevant in my opinion. That's the wrong thing. So very simple. Now to the flag with a, f a word, you can, whoopsie, where is it? There it is. Uh, you can take make a picture with a 2 to 1 aspect ratio. The resolution is really irrelevant. I just used something. Um, and you put whatever, you can put whatever there is in black and white. I use, well, you can use gray. So you have more colors you can choose from. I just made this font in, in the uh, Illustrator. Like uh, you can do, you can use whatever program you like, and import the picture. So this is the picture I just showed you, and with with these uh, flags with something on them, you really have to be careful not to have them be have have them have too much on the shape key side. You can see I've made something as a uh, shape key negative, because otherwise you really couldn't read it. Um, so this is something you have to keep in mind that you have to make it fairly straight for it to work. Then you can you have a color a mix RGB node uh, going into the flag material. So again, we start at a UV texture coordinate, go into a mapping node, and very important, you have to rotate the picture by minus ninety degrees because I'm bad at UV unwrapping. No, because because I you were unwrapped uh, it for the gradient texture first, and then this was the afterthought. Uh, so when you got this picture, you take a color ramp. This it really doesn't matter if you you can choose the color here. If you have m grays, you can essentially do the same as you do with the gradient texture because this is grays, and you just uh, split it in parts. But uh, it takes the bro color, so this, this white is the factor for the mix RGB node. White means the lower socket, so the color 2 is, took, uh, is used, and black means color 1 is used. So everything that's black will use this color ramp image. Everything that's white in this picture will use this color ramp. So you can overlay it. So you can take whatever flag, you can change the flag here, like, for example, put, uh, really, anything here. I can't think of a good example. So, to make a, uh, this looks like a flag that exists, I can't just, am bad with flags. Um, so you can take two colors you like. Totally didn't say something dumb here. And, uh, change the colors here accordingly and it just yeah now I have actually have no idea where this is <laughs> I'm just yeah so this is the basic setup again it goes the mix RGB goes into the flag material and the flag material does this magic right um, then this pole is parent hut so if you want to move it you move everything at once uh, the camera focuses on this flag. You can change that if you go into the camera. So if you go into the camera, you uh, go into depth of field, change the focus object, or use the distance by pressing the X. So you can focus on whatever you want. Now if you 
this works if you have three screens this will work beautifully if you have three screens but if you only have two screens this won't work very well uh, and to make it work for two screens you just change the resolution here so this is uh, 4040p times uh, times 3 so this is a uh, 1440 1440p monitor and this would be two 1414p monitors and if you want to change it you just press control uh, shift F or go into view navigation walk navigation I'd advise you to make a shortcut here and you can walk around like in a video game press tab and you are walking around on the moon surface and you're the right size compared to the flag like Wah. yeah <laughs> because it fo is focusing on this flag so it's r really really easy to use of course the sun the light is a sunlight which is why you can see it in the V so I don't know what this view is it's not anymore <laughs> you can change the orientation of the light by turning this sunlight which is done here it's uh, used for both cycles and EV because I want to have the stars be the same but change the lighting and stuff the earth is a real object as well uh, and I'll go to cycles for that um, it has an atmosphere clouds and uh, earth layer it's really basic earth you can change it scale it up scale it down I'd advise you to move all of them at once so you don't have the atmosphere somewhere else right um, we've got two moon, moon layers we've got this one layer it's uh, with the landscape add-in uh, it's some preset here uh, if you want to change it you can of course just for example scale it down if you want less hills or scale it up if you want more hills which looks hideous <laughs> and this is the same you just scale it up if you want or down you can scale it in by negative one if you want the terrain to invert but if you do that be aware that you have to change something else because you'd see the uh, this edge here right and this is the robot um, how you if you want to move this um, it's not parented uh, these are parented so if you turn it by local X these turn with uh, it and this turns with it you know how it works it's not rigged because I'm too incompetent to rig it but if you want to move it you select everything and just move the legs like this and adjust them right I think that's everything and rendering just normal I advise you to use 512 or up 512 samples or more because it's especially with the flags the smaller you go the harder it's, it gets for the uh, for the denoiser to take the um, the t details so if you look at a flag here this is a not a non denoised image I'll put the link to the Google Drive where you can find them in the description of this video and if you look at the denoised image this is the noise image uh, you can see I've lost lots of details which is passable if you're using it on a uh, phone with a small screen like a, f a full HD screen but if you're using it on a 4k big giant monitor it's really important to have this detail which is why I put both of them in so be aware that you have maybe have to either deactivate the denoiser or render real high sample counts and be aware it's on CPU by default because I'm using the CPU to render right I think that's everything um, have fun with this project I guess